Then the door knocked. He said, we have to go. We got to go. Andrew is awake. Then he said, and Andrew just walked in with his laptop, sat down next to me, and he looked like, huh? hi. Didn't expect me at all. Gave me a hand. Very friendly. Very friendly. I have to give them that. And then Tristan was like, we have to go. We have to go. He was so scared because Andrew was like, we have to work. Get it out. Very scared. So I was like, hey, is Andrew running this whole show? And he was like, yeah. All right, go ahead. Um, either way, we've been speaking for three years, and he was always very nice, very respectful. Um, we had very long conversations, back and forth, like friends. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go to Romania. He offered to pay for everything. I refused because I was like, you know what, I want to feel safe, want to pay for my own hotel. I do not know this guy. Just that was the reason. So he hit me up there every day, like, you know what, when I'm going to see you, I want to have sex with you. And I'm like, mm -hmm. bro. <laughs> so I was like, no, I'm not going to do that, first of all. Never done that. I said, take the bitch to dinner first. I have all the screenshots for this, either way. So, and then he was, yeah, we'll take you out to dinner. And I was like, yeah, that's better, that's nice. And then a few days later, he was like, come over to my house, I will call you an Uber. And I was like, bro, when is the Uber arriving? Because I was in this hotel. He said, 30 minutes. I was like, laying in bed, it was evening. I was like, I have 30 minutes to get ready. So I did. I ran downstairs, got into the Uber. I sent the location to my friends, obviously. But it was not at all what I was expecting. I was expecting this gentleman in a suit, like he always is. He was like in a sweatband, hair is messy, everything was total messy. He looked like a total uncared for person. But I walked in and he, the first thing he greeted me, and then he turned around to all his cars. He was like, this is the world famous Lana, but you already know that, right? And then he showed all his cars. And I was like, I'm not interested in this. I didn't look you up. But he said, why not? He got angry. So I was like, because I'm here for you. Then we went to this office you always see in his podcasts and everything. But it was so confusing to me because it was like this big door with locks and everything, big chairs. If you sit on those chairs, you cannot see that somebody is sitting. You have to remember that for later on. So we sat down and he just started to talking about how much money you're going to give his assistant for all her work because he's in Dubai right now and everything. And I was like, all right, where's this conversation going? Because I'm not interested in all the money and everything. I'm just like, hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. And then he was like, do you want something to drink? I said, yeah, that would be nice. And he called his assistant. So I was like, why do you not get it yourself? He said, why shouldn't I? I said, because this is arrogant. Then he got frustrated a little bit more. And he just kept on talking about his money and everything. So I called him a little bit out. I said, you walk funny. You have a limp when you walk. <laughs> you talk stupid. Are we going to have wow. a normal conversation or not? And then he was like, sure, a little bit. And there was a light bulb at this room. It was a different color. Everybody, all the lights were white, and that color was brown. Because I was so bored with his conversation about money. I was like, hey, that light bulb is stupid. He's got off the chair, run down the room. He was like, oh, I'm going to fix it. Like, so insecure. Not what I expected at all. I've been speaking to him for three years. Then he sat down. And then out of nowhere, he was like, Andrew is awake, Andrew is awake, panicking. And I was like, yeah, so what's the deal? Then the door knocked, he said, we have to go, we have to go, Andrew is awake. Then he said, and Andrew just walked in with his laptop, sat down next to me, and he looked like, huh? hi. Didn't expect me at all, gave me a hand, very friendly, very friendly, I have to give them that. And then Tristan was like, we have to go, we have to go. He was so scared because Andrew was like, we have to work, get it out. Very scared. So I was like, hey, is Andrew running this whole show? And he was like, yeah but you, now you have to go. So we went outside, and, I was, and he said, thank you for your time. Can you please answer all your messages? Because I'm a slow texter. And then I was in the Uber the way out, and then he keeps on texting me, and I was like, you know what? It's not going to work. It's not the vibe, and he agreed. And then he started to be a little bit ugly at WhatsApp, and I said, you need to calm down. You look like a fish. <laughs> and yeah, that was the little story of me and Tristan Tate. I did text him after that, and he tried to be ugly a little bit, and then my friends texted him like, shut up because we will put you in the truck and then he got a little bit scared then he told me like your friends are scary and the next day my friends told him that like calm down because we will put you in the trunk and the next day he was in the trunk of the police uh, wagon because they got arrested again so that's funny um so yeah they were very respectful very but it was so weird he's so scared Wait, of his brother a little bit i will look it up i think he's April, May, June, the time. So I have to look it on my Instagram. You can see the picture. Wait, you said the day after he got arrested again? No, like a f last week he got arrested. I, my friends yeah, texted him again, last like... week, like, be nicer because we will put you in the trunk. And the next day he was in the trunk of the police car. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So he was very nice, respectful. He was 
his brother came in and he got so scared. For some reason, I have to get out. He's awake, he's awake. And I was like, does your brother run the whole show? And he's like, yeah, now you have to get out. So he was very sweet, very respectful, but I'm just hmm. wondering if he's not more the social media figure. I think his brother, Andrew, is the total brains. He walked in, he had that very manly era, very sexy manly. You felt it right away, and Tristan was just there like, like that puppet is sitting. <laughs> I don't know, I think Andrew is the real brain, for sure. I don't know, I was so confused myself because we were speaking for three years and I asked him, why do you speak for me for three years? It's not like a hookup thing and everything. How often would you, would you guys speak on the phone? Also, yeah. And then and he how often would you guys text each other? Almost weekly for three years. And he was like, oh, yeah, it's that long, time I was more on the time. phone because now I cannot do that anymore because the police is searching my phone and stuff like that. I'm like, sure. For the people who not believe me, I've ever seen so. <laughs> I believe her. I think that's the most believable story I've ever heard on here, actually. But again, <laughs> it's not like he was disrespectful. We just got, when Andrew walked in, he was like, whoa. So the story is you met up with him and you were slightly underwhelmed and that's the extent No, I was just not expecting this kind of persona, like a little scared persona or something. It was so weird, just talking about money, how much money going to give his assistant, his cars, very arrogant, like this is a famous lot and you already knew that, right? And I was like, no, I do not watch it. But I mean, isn't, don't you go in kind of expecting that they're going to talk about money and no, I mean, because kind of three years is a long business. time, right? I told him that too, on WhatsApp, I told him like, you know what, three years is a long time. Obviously, you want to show your house a little bit. That's a normal thing, like, welcome to yeah. my house. I understand that. That's fine. Sure. But when you sit down, you're going to bash about the money you're giving your assistant. I do not know your assistant. I do not know what the police thinks is going on. Why do you want to yeah. talk that to me? Okay. I was like, you know, can we not have a normal drink? Ask me what my favorite color is or something. Be nice. So I have sure. a question. Did he tell you he wanted to do it before or after you got to Romania? Before. No, no. Lie. When I arrived. Okay. Wait, Nicolette, can you scoot your mic that way a little bit? This when way. I arrived. That way, yeah. And let's be honest, that man is sexy as fuck. You cannot deny it. Who, he's Tri sexy. Tristan? Yeah, he's tall. He looks like shit when I arrive, but he's not ugly. I will never say that. He's tall. He has his biceps bigger than my fucking head. He's tall. He's muscular. For sure, but I just didn't expect such a well, shy you got to make up your mind, right? You're just like, he's a, a scared, timid, coward one second. Yeah, I would never go to like him a again. Fish, and then in the next second, he's a, a buff stud Chad. Like, which, which yeah, is it here? You, of course, he has muscles. You cannot deny it. It has nothing to do with his personality. If somebody has muscles, it's muscles. Well, what did you expect the personification of a man who's under massive investigation? and is meeting up with somebody he's been talking to for three years, who's a friend of his, of course he's probably going to be nervous and probably have all sorts of things which are going on, right? I did, and I had that in mind, but I think when you sit down in a normal conversation, in a locked up room, no phone, mobile phones off, everything, it would be nice to have a normal conversation. You do not really know me, right? So why would it make sense to tell me how much money you That's really everybody? weird, though, right? That's, uh, that's self-contradictory. So what do you mean he doesn't really... You've been talking for three years, I thought. He doesn't really know you. No, not in that way. If you never meet well, with what somebody... Way? What, what, what yeah, way? I'm sorry. I, will, I feel I like I've been talking with no, somebody no. for three years yes. that I would get to know them pretty well, right? Yeah, it's not like a very deep conversation we had. Obviously, every week something like, hey, what you doing? And he went to this, and that's just like friendly conversation like you are saying. But I was not expecting... Well, wait, I thought that you were talking to him on the phone. Also, yeah, just about his way, his life, and everything, but not seriously, not about his money. Why would he do that? That's private, right? Yeah, so no, no, no. I didn't before expect you, that. Before you kind of pivot to the next thing, let's, let's see if we can get this figured out. When you say, I was talking to this guy weekly, uh, does that mean you were like... Oh, hey, what's up, Tristan? How are you? And he went, good, how are you? And you said, good, and like that was the extent of most of your conversation. Is that no. what you mean? Or did also, you have like, in-depth conversations about it? Where he was going, things? what he was doing with the girls, stuff like that. Just like, I do not know if I can say everything here. But it's like more than just, hey, how are you? And then finish the conversation. It was, we did not have sexual conversations at all, but more about life, like when he was younger, puberty, everything, stuff like that. Mm -hmm like a normal human being. So that's why I was expecting just like, what you were saying, like a little bit more friends vibe. And then I arrived, he only talked about money and it's scarce. And I was like, eh? confusing. But I don't know why that's confusing, right? So he's, he's showing you his life, right? Yeah, but if you 
never talk to somebody about your finances? Why would you, when you meet somebody in person for the first time, sit down with this person and be like, I'm going to tell you how much I pay my assistant when I see her again. Like, that's, well. Why, why would that? I don't understand why that's problematic. That's to him talking about I didn't about say it was work. problematic. I just isn't, personally isn't, found it that, a little isn't weird. That, hang on. Isn't, isn't that first date territory to talk about work? You talk can about tell what me you what do. kind of work you do, but I'm not interested in you throwing money around, no? Yeah, but, but he didn't. I, I didn't actually hear any part in the story where he threw money around. Money around, like what he's giving all the people. That's yeah, he's talking about around. his job and his work, right? But it was I'm not always talking about it was not talking about his money it was like she's in dubai hiding for the government i'm going to pay her this amount and just like why do you want to tell me all this i just was not there for that i just wanted to be friends like we were on whatsapp like normal nice good vibes well what what was the nature of so your the guy, so, so wait so so this guy who is i would say unfairly um often targeted because of his brother I agree. Right, has a friend who he's been talking to for three years who finally comes into town. He gets a chance to meet her. He's talking to her, and he has somebody he feels like he confides, can confide in. So he starts confiding in you, and you're punishing him for that? I do not say it's confiding in you. Let's be honest. A man like that, he told me that that's 500 women over a week or something. So it's not that I'm a very good friend. I will never see me as a very good friend. I never would tell me that or something. I think if you have your friends. So did you just fly out there for a booty call? No. Well, then what the hell were you out there for? Meeting him. But well, I thought, I thought, well, if wait, I was wait, there for wait, a booty call, I would say, you're, yeah, let's fuck. You're not friends, right? You don't, you don't consider him to be a friend. He doesn't think he considered you to be a close friend. He talked about sex the second you touched down. Like, what the hell do you, were you out there for? Be honest. Meeting what were you out there for? in a person. I wanted to see the person behind all the social media. And I told him that if I was there for a booty call, I would say, yes, please fuck me. No, I did not. <laughs> What? Yeah, so so then your intention, did he pay to fly you out? No. I paid for everything no. myself. No. Well, I mean, that was, a, that was a good decision. If he knew that you were going to, like, take it on a road show and slander him And I told him that I want to meet you for Just for meeting up for with you. you one time. <laughs> no, I just told him that I want to meet you for you, for, like, your character behind everything else, mm -hmm. because on WhatsApp we spoke very respectfully. And that's why I ignored him and he said, hey, let's, uh, let's say that all of this, that I'm just going to take you at face value and all of this did happen, right? What, what is the actual point, since the guy didn't actually do anything bad to you, of taking this story on the road and slandering his name? What is the point of that? Is it really slandering? It's just talking about a date. It's not very bad. It's no, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. You said that. Oh. underscore SRT donated $1,000. Pop champagne. Pop that All bottle, right. Maddie. Well, I think the point you're, is, it's you're very you're entertaining. Okay, it's an entertaining story, and it's her story, and she yeah, can and share it if she wants. Yeah, and I'm about her story. We're all done, story. and you can chime in. So let us, let us finish our conversation here. So how, how is it, Did you how, is it not, how is it not slander? <laughs> how is it not slander to uh, run around and basically say, okay, this is all a persona. It's all a social media persona. He's basically a coward in reality. He's very timid. Uh, he's just, he's kind of, uh, has to be in obeyance to his brother. It sounds like total slander. Like, no, I didn't in fact, say that. In, in the entirety of the story, you really never said a nice thing about the guy. Not a single nice thing. I didn't say and slandered him. I said I felt like he was scared. I didn't say he is scared. I didn't say he was a coward. I said I feel It just like seems like was. a non-story. Like nothing happened. I was, I was entertained. And she did say something nice. She said he was hot and had big muscles. No, I'm just saying, like... A point because he is famous. That's your point. If he was it, not no, famous, was, if was, I just would tell you point. a dating story, not him, the same story, but a different man that's not famous. <laughs> are you okay? That's not famous. Well, it didn't, but your dating story that you wasn't would, about You will not react this way if he was not famous. By the way, by the way that dating story would, would actually, without the context of it being Tristan, be totally uninteresting, and nobody would give a shit about it. The only reason that it's even interesting is because you included uh, And that's Tristan's why you asked name. an interesting date story, so that's the only thing I have. So I gave you a yeah, little bit well, of entertainment. Yeah, so I mean, I, it, it, it doesn't sound, just it sounded like, uh, specifically, <laughs> right it sounds like you're just going on like a slander roach. Have you told this story multiple times before no, this? No, it's the first. But it's the Explicit. really yes, the it first is. time? Yes, you okay. cannot find it anywhere. Not, no, it's the first time.